Hi. In this part of the Perl 6 tutorials, we are going to talk about subroutines. Before doing that, let me show you some example that uh, involves the thought operator of uh, Perl 6, which is, I think, really cool. That's what I said. So there's the thought operator. There is another, also another operator in uh, Perl 6 that can uh, smart match uh, the value of 10 plus minus 3. And uh, if uh, that's true, then let's pre uh, print out true. Otherwise, uh, let's print out false. And it's obviously false because 2.72 is not to 10 plus minus 3. On the other hand, if I try to do this with, let's say, uh, 7, 7 gives me true, true. Also, 8 or 8.2. 23. They all are true. Uh, even if we go to 13, that's still true. But if you just barely pass 13, then it already gets false. Of course, if you try in your version of Perl 6, you probably won't have this plus minus operator, because that's something that I created for myself, similarly to the thought operator. And uh, if you would like to, to see how it can be done, then just stick to this uh, presentation, and at the end we'll see it. So, before going there, let's see how in Perl 6 you can actually uh, declare uh, subroutines. So I'm opening the uh, VI and seeing how it can be done. You use the sub keyword, then the name of the subroutine, and then you give uh, the list of the parameters that are accepted by this uh, call. This in this case, I can use the same variables, $A and $B, very uh, clever names here. Uh, explaining exactly what kind of values we are expecting there. Anyway, it returns just a string uh, build out for uh, two values. And then I can call the function uh, when within parentheses provided these values and the return value will be printed. So I can run this with Perl 6 and it will uh, print out 4 2 as expected. What happens if here I provide a third value? Perl 5 users would think that it should work, but in Perl 6 it just e it strictly checks whether the number of parameters fits the right number that was expected. So it gave me a throw me next expect exception. The same will happen if you provide few uh, parameters, less than enough parameters, you will get an exception there. Obviously Perl 5 users will uh, worry about and would prefer to have a way to write a subroutine without all kind of restrict restrictions, and they can do that actually because they can write a subroutine like this, and then uh, instead of using the dollar a and dollar b, which are not declared now, the values are passed in the at underscore uh, array, and then I can just call this way and see how I can uh, call it uh, several different uh, types of variable values. Now if I call this, it will return the data structure as uh, was created by the, uh, the Perl method. Now of course, uh, you might uh, not want to throw out all the nice features of Perl 6 just by uh, using the old version of uh, uh, subroutine uh, creation. So let's see what else you can do with the new way. One thing that you can do is say that uh, the second parameter is actually optional. So what we did here is after the $B put a question mark, which means that the $B, the second parameter of this subroutine, is optional. If the user calls it with two parameters, it will see that uh, A gets four and B gets two. If go it calls with, four, with only one parameter, then uh, $B will be some kind of an undefined value. So in order to uh, avoid printing out a, a warning caused by using undefined value, I ask whether B is defined, and then using the ternary operator, print out either the uh, original value, return the original value that we had earlier, or uh, return dollar the content of dollar $A and then NA. Running the this script, we'll see, you'll see that what we expected is what happens. It gets 4, 2, and 4, and not A. a, a. Of course, some people will prefer here to give dollar $B uh, some kind of a default value. So they'll go and say, okay, let's put a default value here. 
and use this operator in Perl 6 and type in let's say that's 17. Now if we call this one it will blow up, throw an exception saying cannot modify read only value. And that's because in Perl 6 all these uh, parameters $R and $B are by default read only. So you can't change them. So how can you give default values? Well there are two ways for that at least. Uh, depending on what really you really want. One of them is to give a default value here, right uh, in the definition. And in that case you don't even need to put the question mark because by creating a default value, adding a default value to a variable, you automatically uh, make it uh, optional. And that's what can you can say. You can see $17 got, uh, $B got 17 as we expected. And that's the way how you, you can uh, put a default value there. Of course, you can you can try now to give another value here, but that uh, the fact that we made uh, uh, it uh, optional and with a default value still doesn't mean that it can be changed. In order to do that, what you can do is uh, it's still uh, optional now. Say that it is a copy of the original value. And then let's put it a default value here. We can call this and then we get the default value. And we can we make dollar be changeable because now instead of uh, passing the value as an alias, we are passing it as a copy. So dollar b is going to be a change uh, something that can be modified. In addition uh, to this, you might be interested in how to provide restrictions to what values can be passed. In Perl 6 you can uh, tell the subroutine that certain uh, parameters are restricted to certain types. So here I, I say that $B is, needs to be an integer. In this case if I call it this way, giving it an integer, that will work. But if I give it a string, it will give an exception, throw an exception. And that's what happens. It gets a nominal type check failed parameter b. It's expected, a st it's got an expected an integer but it got a string. In addition to this, uh, so if I run this with, with 10 it would work, but what happens if we would like to restrict this in a different way? We can restrict the dollar $B saying where and then I put here a block which is just something that can get executed and then I can say where B is less than let's say 9. In this case, if I call it, it will uh, run the first one, but the second one gets a constraint type check failed for parameter b. It's because b uh, $B was, uh, wasn't less than 9 as expected. So if the, we, we, there are of course a lot of other ways to declare subroutines, uh, but we'll, instead of going there, let's uh, have a look at how we declared uh, the operators we had. So an operator in Perl 6 is just a funny looking subroutine in the end. So the way you to declare uh, such a subroutine is to declare a, uh, such an operator is to declare a subroutine. Say that it in this case an infix operator. Within the angle brackets, put the name of the operator, in our case it's dot o and o. Uh, provide the two parameter, the names of the two parameters that we are expecting, and because this is an infix operator, it needs a left hand side and a right right hand side. And then within the block do something what you would like it to do. In my case, that's just printing out the first parameter, then things, and then the th uh, the thought, which is the second parameter. And then I can use this way. I can run this right from the command line, and you can see that th th that's what happens. Similarly, well, this is the same file. Similarly we can declare the plus minus operator, which is again an infix operator, gets two, two parameters, a and b, and then creates a range. A range is just two values and the two dots in between. So uh, it's the a minus b and a plus b, that's the range operator. And that then you can uh, use the plus minus operator, which itself creates a range. And that's it. 
uh, it prints out false, true, true, false as expected with the four, four values. That's it. If you like the, the video, please subscribe to my channel and come back later to see the further parts of the presentation. Goodbye.